Well, God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Thursday night worship experience. If you are ready to go and do whatever it is God wants to do tonight, simply say, I am ready. Simply throw that in the chat box. Just simply say, I am ready. I'm so grateful that you all are here tonight. There is something special that I believe is going to happen tonight simply because of how much God loves us. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and say, I'm ready. If you are ready to receive from the Lord, God bless you. I see so many of you already in here. I feel the anticipation of God going to do something great tonight. And I already feel your expectation for God to meet you right in your place of desperation. So God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. And welcome. Let me know where you're coming in from so that I may greet you. I want to greet you by the state you represent. Yeah, y'all hear that song? Jaira. My, my. I know that's somebody on the media team right there because, whoo, that song right there has been ringing in my ear all day today. All right. So my name is Marcus. So glad to be before you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me know where you're coming in from so that I may greet you. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Oh, my. It's feeling like the worship room right here. Bless you from Texas. I know Maryland is in here. I believe Florida is in here as well. Bless you all, no matter where you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. YouTube, welcome on YouTube, welcome Facebook, and welcome on our portal, which can be accessed by going to marcusrivers.org and clicking watch online. God bless you. I'm ready tonight. I'm ready. It's our Thursday worship experience. Hallelujah. Just put flames of fire on the screen. Woo! I want to hear this. Just put flames of fire. Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all know this one? Yeah. Come on, Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Just throw those flames of fire on the screen. I see you all in here. Georgia, I see you. Bless you. Hallelujah. God, we worship you tonight. Have your way, God. <laughs> Interrupt us tonight, God, and do what it is you want to do. Come on, he's in here. Go ahead, if you haven't already, go ahead and share the broadcast out. Share the broadcast out so that we can let people know that we are on here. In all my years of attending church, I don't think I've ever been excited about attending Bible study until now. Wow, wow, bless you, Shante. She said all her years, wow, of attending Bible study, she's never been so excited for Bible study. Wow, bless you. Thank you for saying that, wow. Wow, bless you. Maryland, I see you. North, North Dakota, I see you, Shante. Good to, good to have you. Hallelujah. Helen, I see you. Prophetess Hope, I see you. Woo, listen at this. Go ahead and share it out for me, please. Hey, somebody say more than enough. Texas, I see you. Bless you. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Come on, lift it up. Woo, here's my part right here. Yeah. I'm already chosen. Anyone feel like worshiping? Woo, hi, ya, ya. Come on here. My, my, come on, give it to him. Yeah. Already loved, yeah, more than I could imagine. <laughs> God, we love you. We bless you. I see you all. Bless you, Miss Robinson. I love you. Bless you, Prophetess D'Angelo. I see you all. Hey, woo, go ahead and share the broadcast out. If you're on Facebook, I want you to ping five or six people. Bless you, Janice. I see you. Bless you. Love you. If you're on Facebook, do me that favor. Go ahead and ping five or six people. Let them know we're open and we're, 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 we're getting ready to do some work in here. We are open and in full effect. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jehovah Jireh. Somebody say Jehovah Jireh. Woo! Hallelujah. Bless you, Prophet. It's familiar. Good to see you. Bless you. Hey, I know who I am. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Eee! It's warm in here. My, my. I feel his glory in here and it makes it warm in here. Hallelujah. Thank you all for sharing. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome to the worship room. If you all are ready for the word, simply say I'm ready. Woo! Because I am ready to teach tonight. If you are ready for this word, just simply say I'm ready. Bless you, Shirley. So good to see you. Bless you, Cindy. So good to see so many of you in here tonight. Bless you all. I see you all. You all are in here. Hallelujah. Somebody simply say obey God. Woo! Somebody say, obey God. We're getting ready to go in here. Hallelujah. You know how that delay has you. I'm saying one thing. Y'all type in the last thing. I love it. I love this good old social media. Bless you, Prophetess Alicia. So good to see you. Bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. Let me turn this off. Woo. 
There's my soul right here. Hey, you are enough. Yeah, you are enough. Yeah, you are enough. Yeah, yeah, you are enough. Woo, my mind. I see y'all in the portal. Bless you all in the portal. You are enough. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Jaira. Woo! You are enough. My, my. Come on. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on. You are enough. All right. Don't push me now. <laughs> don't push me. Woo! Hey. I said, I am enough. Yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! All right. Father, we thank you for being here tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do in this atmosphere, God. And God, we especially thank you for what you're doing all this month, God, in our series that we're doing, God. We thank you, God, that you have shown yourself to be a God of redemption time after time, over and over again. God, we bless you tonight, God, for you are matchless in all your ways. Holy Spirit, you're already here. So just saturate this atmosphere and do what it is you want to do. God, we bless you. God, we exalt your name. We bless you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name. And let somebody say, and it shall be. Hallelujah. And it shall be. And it shall be one last time. Go ahead and share it. Invite if you have not already. All right. That'll be the last time I'll be saying that. My focus tonight is to take us a bit deeper in our series entitled Redeem. I didn't know how many parts of my own life God has wanted to redeem. But because I limited God to being a God that only redeems the unsaved. And some of you, you may have, have thought the same thing, that redemption mostly applies to people who have not given their heart and life to Christ. But if you've been taking notes and if you've been following this series, you'll understand that redemption is a lifelong process. The only kind of people who do not like hearing this are those who are most committed to religion. Life, a lifelong process, Billy, is redemption. All of our earthly life, we will be allowing God to redeem a part of us. Bless you, Prophetess Harper. Our need for redemption is what causes us to depend on the Holy Spirit. Come on here. I want you to understand what the, 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 the motivation, come on here, uh, uh, the inspiration, come on here, the thing that causes us to, 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 to go back running. Somebody say, and I'm running back to God. Oh my God. Woo. I felt something drop in the room right, right through there, Pastor Erica. And I am running back to God. We are running to a place with God where we are in need of him to redeem a part of our life now more than ever before. Can I share a dream? Can I share a dream? Somebody just simply say, share it. Somebody simply say, share it. Now, I ain't going to share it if y'all don't want me to share it. I'll go right into my teaching. But I believe there's a dream that I had and I shared it on the prayer line. I believe it was Wednesday. And I believe that this is a dream that could potentially turn into some type of book, some type of training, and especially some type of class. I, I want to share share a dream that I had with you. Um, I want to share a dream that I had with you, um, if you allow me to. And we're going to jump right into our series, all right? So I want to say this was Sunday night. Sunday night, um, I was in a big church. I was in a big church. And, you know, sometimes I'm in dreams, you don't recognize who people are. But in the dream, it, it'll be almost like you you know who's in the dream. You know the people, but you won't exactly um, recognize them if you were to have known them like in your everyday walk of life, right? And so in the dream, long story short, because I've shared this with some of, some of you that are on the prayer line, but I think it ties right into our topic tonight entitled The Voice. My, my, somebody just say The Voice. Somebody say The Voice because cause if we be honest, there, 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 there's something that is going on all, all, all throughout the ecclesia, all throughout your community, all throughout the nation, as it pertains to the potency, the accuracy, and the focus of one's voice. The, the enemy is really after your voice. All right, don't let me get ahead of myself here. But but the enemy really wants to, I know there was a movement of, of, of you know, your voice has been muzzled and you have a voice, but, but I'm going to come from a different perspective because I believe that if we're not careful, we'll be talking without a voice. All right, all right. We'll be making noise without a voice. We'll be saying things without a voice. And, and it is possible woo, for you to be prophetic 
and not know the voice. It is possible woo, for sound to be coming out your mouth and no, no, no voice come through your lungs. It is possible. And if you let me work this text, I'll show you how some of you have lost your voice woo, and you didn't even know it. Have you ever been talking without a voice? <laughs> Have you ever been doing things for God without, without the voice? <laughs> telling you what to do and telling you what to say and telling you what not to say. All right, all right. The voice. <laughs> God, we thank you for the voice. I can never have a voice <laughs> if I'm not in love with the voice. All right, I got ahead of myself. Oh, my. Media team, y'all pushing me. They say, teach it early then. <laughs> Here it is. So I was having a dream. And in the dream, I had, I was sitting in the front row and there was another preacher sitting in another, another row on the other side. It was two columns of the church. Somebody shout two columns, hallelujah, because some of you are at a crossroad of two places, two decisions, two destinations. Some of you are at a crosswalk. If you turn this way, you're going here. And if you turn that way, you're going there. And, and, and depending on which way you take, it determines and it predicts your outcome and it predicts, it predicts where God is trying to take you. Somebody simply say two columns. In this church, one side was over here, one side was over there. I was sitting in the front row, and the man of God, um, and, and I just knew this through, through how the dream ended, that this was his wife. He was sitting in the front row, I was sitting beside him or, or, or in front of him. And his wife was on the other side of the church doing ministry. She was just doing ministry, um, prophesying, flowing in the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and something happened to her and as she was ministering, she fell flat on her face. Woo! Somebody say flat on her face. I prophesy, Sharita, I see you, babe. I prophesy that in this season, woo, while you are doing the work of God, Candace, you will not fall on your face. Huh? You will not collapse. Hallelujah. And you sure will not die. But if you do, I'm going to leave you right there and jump back into, into this dream. <laughs> Somebody say, but if I do, but if I do, if I do. <laughs> so this woman fell flat on her face. The women that were assisting her ran to her aid to assist her. I came ready tonight. I don't come before you as a man that has not been studying. I'm sick of preachers, prophetess Alicia, sitting before me because and they, and they know they ain't been studying and, and they know they ain't been worshiping. And they ain't got no word in their spirit and just buying time because they just want to be in front of people. This is a season to where if you are a preacher, you got to study the word. Woo! If you are a minister, if you are a pastor, if you are an apostle, if you are a prophet, if you are a teacher, if you are an evangelist, you got to submerge yourself under the anointing. You got to get under the umbrella and the oil of the word. If you ain't studying, you ought not to be preaching. All right. I just had to get that out of me and off of me because I'm sick of preachers that ain't got no word. Talking but ain't got no voice. Talking but ain't got no voice. Talking but ain't got no power. Talking but when you log off, your life is the same. Talking but you can't even discern through what they're trying to say because they are the distraction. Preacher, eh, are you the distraction? My, my, are you the only thing in the room that doesn't make sense? Hi, bye. Pastor Trina, I got to come out of that because that ain't my Sunday school lesson. Her, here it is, here it is, here it is. And so in this dream, the woman fell flat on her face. Prophet is familiar. Now her husband was sitting in the front row, but he was in a daze. Somebody say a daze. The man of God was in a daze. He was in so much of a daze that he didn't even see his wife fall and collapse. Can I tell you, women of God, that God isn't going to put you with a man who, that don't have the capacity to cover you and to, to discern when you're collapsing and to know when too much is enough. Come on here. God's going to put men in your life, daughters of God, who, that will be able to catch you before you fall, that will stop you from stumbling. I decree and declare who, in this season that God is going to position you for the right person so they'll have the capacity to focus, the end Energy, the tenacity to cover you. Can you cover me? Yeah, you like me, but can you cover me? Woo, I hear some of you saying it in your spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know I look good, but can you cover me? Woo, I know I got a career, but can you cover me? Come on here. I know, I know, I know I can pay my own mortgage. Woo, I got I got good credit. Come on, daughters of Zion. I decree and declare woo, that you that you will not be hooked up to a man like the man in a dream. So his wife collapsed on the other side of the room. Woo. And he was in such a daze that he did not even know what was going on. So through, I guess, knowledge of whatever dimension I was in in the dream, I said, man of God, can you cover me? Woo. Let me come out of that. I said, man of God, your wife has collapsed. He then jumped up, ran over to his wife, 
and then kissed her. And then she got up and went back into ministry. I walked with the man of God back to his seat. I sat down with him and I asked him a question. And as I'm telling this, I remember more from then what I remember when I said, man of God, what happened? And the man of God said, I was thinking about how I didn't do things right with my son and I became suicidal and I wanted to end my life. So, so, and I remember when I woke up thinking after God shared with me what was going on in the dream, I said, man of God, I, I said to myself, this man of God is sitting there while his wife is doing the work. Side note, woo, you better be careful who you link up with. There are some of you, if you link up with the wrong person, you are gonna have to do all the work in the marriage, woo, all the work in ministry while they're sitting down in the days. I come against you connecting and linking your life up with people that seem to be in a days come out of that days come out of those grave clothes Lazarus you cannot change change a person who is committed to a gaze I said to this man I said man what happened to you and he said he, he had become suicidal and, and while his wife had collapsed he was in a suicidal place in his mind so much so that he didn't even realize what was going on in the church that he belonged to somebody say no longer distracted no longer distracted then I looked over at his son and his son was just do, praising God, worshiping and doing things like normal. Here is the word of the Lord. Woo! God is about to send someone. There's two kinds of people. Woo! That because you are redeemed, hallelujah, bless you, prophet Shamika. Woo! Hallelujah. I felt that hallelujah. Because you are redeemed, God is getting ready to send two kinds of people in your life. The first kind of person, ha <laughs> ha, that God is getting ready to prophetically send in your life because some of you think you got enough people and then some of you have been hurt so bad that you really don't think God can use people. You, you think he just speak to you and then you just hear what he say and you go on about your prophetic business. I'll deal with the prophets another day. I don't have time to deal with prophets tonight. My time is different. And so God's going to send a person who has the ability, listen at this family, Woo. God is sending, y'all share an invite if you have not already, God is sending people in your life Woo. that have the ability to kiss you Woo. so that you may wake up. Can I preach this like I feel it? God have mercy, I talked to the portal because they got a little bit of action going on. In the last season, somebody say the last season, it was a kiss, like, like a kiss, like a, a kiss from Judas, Woo. and they betrayed you. Come on here, come on here. They showed everybody who you were, and how you were doing things in the last season. It was a kiss that that that, 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 that put you in a place of, of being like you were betrayed. But God told me, y'all, God said, I didn't make it up. Pastor Erica, God said that he's getting ready to send people who, that have the ability to kiss you. And it will not be a lustful kiss. It, it will not be a kiss that causes you to stumble. But there are people that God is putting in your life to show you through a kiss that they are for you. Here it is. I looked up the definition of the word kiss. Here it is, Prophet Shioma. Sometimes we say these words, but we forget what the definition of the words even are. The definition of the word kiss, and I'm in my preaching time now. Woo! The kiss means the touch with the lips as a sign of love, reverence, and a greeting. There are people that God has assigned to the earth woo, that are waiting on you so that they may kiss you and wake up something in you. Everybody is not against you. I know in the last season of your life, you were looking over your shoulder can I trust her can I trust him God what's going on and things collapsing but I prophesied that the first kind of person that God is sending in your life whoo that will be be the kind of person that will kiss you like this man kissed his wife and when he kissed his wife prophetess Denisha she jumped back up into a position of ministry she jumped back into prophesying and praying. And here's what I love about the dream. Somebody say, God speaks through my dreams. Eh, you got to pay attention to what God is telling you through your dreams. This is the season for the dreamer. There are things that God wants to get in our spirit. Woo, and sometimes because we're busy and because we're tired, Karen, and because we're distracted, and sometimes we're just doing things that are good things, but it distracts us from hearing the voice. I heard the Lord say that in this season, he is sending 
need people in our life that have the ability, Habashandobosuka, that have the ability woo, to kiss us and help us to wake up. Some of us cannot wake up by ourselves. Some of us are battling with generational curses. Some of us are battling with strong men. But he is sending you angelic and natural assistance. Yes, he's going to use, hallelujah. Woo, come on here. Yes, he's going to use a supernatural dimension. But I come, bless you, Apostle Nelly, love you so much. I come tonight to tell you that God is getting ready to position you around people that will kiss you so that you can wake up. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Who has kissed you lately? <laughs> we are in our series entitled Redeem. And I believe because of the anointing, there are parts of us that God is redeeming about us. I want to ask you the question again because some of y'all might not have heard me. Who has kissed you lately? <laughs> Woo, come on here. Who, who, who dripped on you? Who, 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 who influenced the season that you were in? God, I thank you <laughs> for the people that you are sending in my life. Hey, hey that will kiss me <laughs> and we understand a kiss to me <laughs> and we understand it's a touch with the lips hallelujah but it's a sign of love Woo! it's a sign of reverence how about shot and it is a proper greeting in some countries i'll tell you that that god is getting ready to bring a reverence back to your life <laughs> he's getting ready to to put a, a coat of honor on many of you because the first thing i hear him saying is that he's getting ready to send people and and, and, and another dimension of this dream is, is, is I'm so glad. Somebody said if I was in church and I had a good old organ apostle, and I said, I'm so glad, whoa, that although this husband in my dream was distracted, and I believe I was just a person or a, a, a vessel, I was symbolic of another person, whoo, that he put in the scene of this dream just to let the woman of God know that while sometimes people are supposed to protect you, he always, and this is going to bring life to about 15 of you, God always has a ram in the bush. He won't let you die. <laughs> he won't let you drown. Mama Sha, come on here. I know so many things are going on throughout our country. We just went through one of the biggest court cases in my history where the man, the, the, the ex-police officer was found guilty. And for many people, that was a sigh of relief. But I began to pray and the Lord began to show me. I see your worship portal. God began to show me that this is just the beginning. And so while some are celebrating woo, as if everything is over, I want those of you who have your hand in political matters and those of you, come on here, that have been allowed a seat to the table able to understand that there are political matters that God is getting ready to open the doors of for prophetic people, for apostolic people, for evangelistic people. Come on here. People with the anointing, believers with the, with the knowledge base of how to know how to help our communities become better. I was listening to uh, one of the greatest preachers I believe that walks the face of this earth and he said there are some people that try to attack him and try to say things about him and say you only pick and choose the matters that you deal with and you don't address every type of matter. And this is what he said. He said, big decisions eh, really happen in small rooms. How about Basha? Oh God, I want some of y'all to say small room, small room. In other words, he was saying, while you are watching how I respond on an Instagram post, while you are watching what I say on Facebook, while you are watching what I post on Twitter, you don't understand that I have connections with CNN. You don't understand that the president had, in this case, had invited him to come sit with him. There are decisions. This is why you can not allow social media <laughs> to be the only place where you feel like you were doing conflict resolution. Evangelist Kim, there are tables, whoa, and there are platforms that have nothing to do with social media. Some of us, whoa, gotta be careful of how we address matters on social media because here it is, Apostle Nelly, whoa, there is a bigger audience of people who are watching how you respond. Be careful of the rooms you sit in. There are big things. Somebody say big things, big things. Here it is, Prophetess Alicia. Big things are getting ready to happen for many of you. Here it is in small rooms. I see a room. Woo! How about shy? And this room has a small door. But here it is, Sharita, babe. When we open up that door, it is going to be the opening point of a stadium and a coliseum. Some of you have judged the size of a room, the size of your impact, the size and the, and the force of your voice 
only because you misdiagnosed the size of a room because of the size of the door. Big things first happen through the turning of a knob of a small door. There is a bigger room behind that door, but, but sometimes you just have to wrap your mind around the concept and the ideology that God has taken me whoo, into another place, into a bigger place. But I want you to hear this and I got to get to my text here. Ba 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 shaka, suble shata. Oh, I feel fire in my belly right here. God's getting ready to allow you all to do some big things in small rooms. It only looks small. Woo, who was that for? Because some of y'all people have been sizing you up, sizing you up and say, oh, that ain't about nothing. And hear that little person go, can I tell you, God is getting ready to do some big things Woo, in small rooms. God have mercy. He's getting ready to do some things, big things with a little bit of people. Pastor Erica, I have learned that I don't need as big of a team as I thought I need. Come on here. And I'm talking about seven years ago when I started. I thought I need 20 staff, but I'm learning, Prophet is Denisha, woo, that if God allows me woo, just to feel his anointing, and have access to his strategy. How about Sha? It doesn't matter how many people you got on your team. In this next season, Basha, I feel like running. God is going to show you. Here it is. This is our Gideon year. Prophetess Shioma, you said that, and I have not let go of that prophetic word. This is the year, Basha, woo, where you're going to do more with less. You don't need as many people as you think you need for your church, for your business for your ministry. Baba Shah, this is a Gideon year. He's going to allow you to step into a new place. Oh, Jesus. Hi, Baba Shah. With less people than you thought. Somebody say, and I have enough. I, and I have enough. And I have enough. Let me go into my text or I'll get lost and I come to encourage you tonight. This is a Gideon year. You're going to do more with less. What if I told you that you have so much that you are getting confused because you're going to have to learn how to manage what it is you have. And so the first thing, let me get to my points here. The first thing you got to understand tonight is that God is sending someone in your life that will kiss you, kiss you to wake you up, kiss you to keep you accountable, kiss you to keep you focused. This man kissed his wife and then he stepped back into, she stepped back into her assignment. Here's what I love about redemption, Karen. What I love about redemption, and this ought to cause hope to come back into some of you's of heart right now. What I love about redemption is when God redeems you, he doesn't ask you, why did you do that? Why did it take you so long? I told you this was going to happen. Redemption don't ask no question. Redemption stands in a posture of saying, I've been waiting for you. What I love about this dream, oh Jesus, is when this woman came back after the kiss, her armor bearers didn't ask her no questions. They jump back in their position of serving her. Here's a side note, and I'm going to go to my text, and I'm done. In this place, God has put us in called redemption. Be sure to have people around you that don't ask you so many questions. Just be glad I survived. Woo! You ever had people that wonder, why, why, what happened? And tell me about it. Detail for detail. This is a season. Woo! I feel my help coming in the room where you will not be able to explain it. Woo! You will just be able to, to jump back into it. Some of you are dealing with people and you're wasting your energy trying to explain it. They're going to leave anyway. Woo! They're not committed anyway. Come on here. They have too many questions and not enough working in your season. God have mercy. And so in this season, you're going to have to be careful woo, of what you explain and what you share in this season of my life and my team can tell you if you can't go with what God is telling me to do then it might not be your season to be in here how many of you can say that you are to a place where at this point because you know the voice God has strengthened your voice and he has told you in what direction to go. Let me say this and tie it together. We'll move to our text. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because some of you are responding to complaints. Yeah. You are responding to accusations. You are responding and trying to prove people wrong. And when you try to prove a people wrong that don't care anyway, you waste energy. And when God puts you where he wants you to be, you don't have the energy for where you're supposed to be. Somebody say, stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. Yeah. All right, here's our scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter three, verse one. Ha ba ba, shaka. Yeah, I feel fresh glory in here. And so the first point is that God is sending someone to kiss you. Here's our text right here. Matthew chapter three, verse one. 
And we're going to read from the New Living Translations. In those days, John the Baptist came to Ju Judean wilderness and began preaching his message. His message was, let me read that again. Sometimes you'd be so excited to preach, you butcher the text. In those days, John the Baptist came to, to the Jude Judean wilderness, somebody say wilderness, and began preaching. His message was, let me pause right here. While I was reading this text, Pastor Erica, the Lord told me to tell some of you that you are not in the wilderness. Yeah, some of you have been acting like you've been in the wilderness. Some of you have been acting like you've been in a dry and barren land where there is no water. Come on, Pastor Trina. Y'all talk back here. Somebody say, I am not in the wilderness. The enemy who wants you to believe that you are in the wilderness. He wants you to believe that God is taking his hands off of you. You have to be careful, Sabrina, who, what you come into agreement with in this season. I said, okay, God, help me understand the wilderness. That's for some of you, something jolted back in your life right here. Oh, you're not in the wilderness. I want you to hear me loud. Here's the wilderness. It is when you are uncultivated. If you were part of our ministry, all we do is cultivate. So you know that's not you. The wilderness is also an uninhabited place. In other words, it's a place where dead things are. Somebody say, everything in my life is alive. Woo! It might not look how you want it to look like, but Candace is not dead. And so a wilderness is when something is uncultivated. Many of you have been cultivated, so that's not you. Woo! Another word is un uninhabited. If nothing can live in you, then you are the wilderness. Now here's what I understand about redemption and here's what I understand about grace. All of us are a people that something can live in. Somebody simply say, live in me. Woo! I felt glory right there. Somebody say, live in me. See, I'm trying to encourage you because some of you, if, if, if your mind believes that you are in a wilderness or your mind believes that you are in a dead season, everything about you comes in agreement with you feeling like you're dead. Come on here. Live inside of me. Woo! Holy Spirit, live in me. Come on here. Hope, live in me. Love, live in me. Power, live in me. Deliverance, live in me. Here's the other thing I want you to understand about a wilderness. Wilderness is also a place that is inhospitable as a region. In other words, people cannot live there, dwell there, or visit there. Wilderness also means a position of disfavor. Can I tell you, and this ought to encourage a few of you, all the favor on your life should be confirmation enough that you are not in the wilderness. And so in those days, John the Baptist came. Here it is, I'm going back to read it. <laughs> Woo. And then it says preaching His message was Here it is verse 2 chapter 3 Repent of your sins And turn to God For the kingdom of heaven is near Verse 3 and I'm done And we're going to wrap up our points here The prophet Isaiah was speaking about Here it is John I'm sorry There we go All right the prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. Somebody say for him, somebody say for him, somebody say for him, somebody say for him. Here is the prophetic word right here. God is getting ready. For those of you who have been in a season where you have felt like your voice has not mattered, God is getting ready to open up opportunities. Woo! He's getting ready to open up doors. He's getting ready to open up platforms where your voice shall be amplified. Now here's the curveball. Somebody say a curveball. The curveball is this. It may not have anything to do, uh-oh, with social media. I will look away. I'm going to look away like I ain't talking to nobody. Sometimes we box in the influence of our voice to social media. You know how necessary your voice is needed in your community? You know how needed, you know how necessary your voice is needed in the Board of Education? Do you know how necessary your voice is needed in certain parts of the world? Come on here, you are more needed than you know. Your voice is more necessary. Come on here. 
Somebody say, out of the box. Woo! Out of the box. Out of the box. He's moving you out of the box. Here it is. I want you to understand this. The voice of the Lord woo, should be able to invade every area of your life. But I, wanna, I want you to understand this right here. As I was studying this out today, the Lord told me, do you feel that in your spirit, Billy? He's doing something out of the box in this season. As I was studying this text today, Matthew 3, verses 1 through 3, the Lord began to show me that before you can become a voice, you got to be able to recognize the voice. I come against in this moment everything that has tried to hinder you from knowing the voice. And it is possible. Woo! For you to be prophetic and prophesy and still be disconnected from the voice of God. I believe in this day and time, he's going to send somebody to kiss you. And then God is showing us in a new way, even all throughout this pandemic, woo, of how to depend upon his voice. Not this self-governing desire to do what it is we want to do. But I believe that God is bringing us into a place as an apostolic people where we will be reacquainted with his voice. We won't make a move without the direction of his voice. I, I encourage encourage those of you upon the sound of my voice do whatever it is possible as you are representatives of his voice somebody say his voice that you are spending time to hear his voice i said this the other month and it encouraged some of you in such a way but i want to say it again you hear his voice more than you know you hear his voice yeah. in other words you hear him talking to you more than you even realize, more than you even give yourself credit for. Many of you have been walking around and you have come into agreement that you are confused and you are not confused. You have come into a season, many of us, Shirley, have come into a season where we are questioning what we hear God saying, Prophetess Denisha, for we hear the master talking to us better than we even give ourselves credit for. And so I want you to understand, this is a time where we cannot skip, jump over, rush through our devotional time. This is Bible study. So sometimes I want to bring it back to such a practical way that you understand it. Somebody say my devotion time. I come against every distraction, woo, every hindrance, every disruption that causes you to not have moments of devotion time with God. You will not be a minister. You will not be a person. You will not be a business owner who does things without the direction, the guidance, come on here, and the strength of devotion. I counsel every assault. Woo! Everything we put before that intimate time and devotion is when you spend time with the Father and He spend time with you. Some of you, oh my God, I hear this in my in my spirit. Some of you spent time with God, and when He got ready to come in the room, you were done because you had to rush. When you spend devotional time with God, we're talking about knowing His voice. Woo! To become the voice, you got to be well acquainted with the voice. God, am I talking right to anybody? We don't come into his presence, Pastor Erica, with this little short list of stuff we decree and declare and do this and do that, and then we're gone. Some of you are going to have to open up your time frame and allow who you are praying to to come in the room. Yeah. And so when he comes in the room, you become acquainted to his voice. The number one question, Elder Reba, that people have, how do I know God is talking to me? That's the number one question that people have. How do I know when God is talking to me? You are able to recognize his voice, hallelujah, because you want to become the voice, but you got to know the voice. You got to be connected to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so you only begin to recognize the Holy Spirit when you spend time in his presence, Woo! when you spend time in the word. And so his voice never sounds different than his word. Woo! God have mercy. Some of you have been depending upon prophetic voices and apostolic voices. And what do you do when the voice you've been depending upon collapses? What do you do when the voice you've been depending upon, hallelujah, it doesn't have a word for you. You find yourself in a secret place. Yes, I believe in the prophetic. Yes, I believe in all those different apostolic ministries. But we are in a day and a time where you're going to have to know how to hear the voice of God for yourself. 
No more idolizing prophets and apostles, my God. No more idolizing the school of the prophets where I love the school of the prophets. I attended three and I did one myself. But I believe that in the secret place, God will fortify us. And here's what I want you to know. He loves you so much woo, that he will talk to you for himself. Anybody need God to talk? Woo. Anybody have some situation you need God to help you navigate? Yes, you got a covering. And, and yes, you know books. And yes, you can watch it on YouTube. And, and yes, you can call mama. And you can call daddy. But I, I decree and declare that because of us being connected to his voice, my mind, yeah, he'll tell us what to do. He'll tell us what not to do. And so when we allow the voice of the Lord, woo, hallelujah, to be priority in our lives, here it is. He will invade every area of your life. As a prophetic person, woo, as I feel the anointing now, woo, when as a prophetic person, you should not be in a season of confusion. Woo, it, is, it is an indictment woo, for a prophetic person to be confused. And so if you find yourself in seasons where you don't know what to do and you don't know who's talking because some of us hear voices, but not the voice. I shut down Avengers Kim, every voice in our head that is not God. I shut down demonic voices. Woo, I shut down the strong man that tries to talk to you when God ain't talking. I come against delusional spirits. Woo. I come against schizophrenia. I come against bipolarism in the spirit. I come against everything that tries to hinder your kiss and you knowing the voice. You shall hear the voice in this season because of your consecration. Come on here. It ain't about no life camera and flyers and, and, and all that stuff in this season. It's about the voice. If you follow the voice, you won't get lost. Whoa. If you follow the voice, you won't go missing. If you follow the voice, come on here. He'll tell you what to do when you only think you're in the wilderness. You know how I know this word is God? Because there was a season of my life, Sharita. Babe, there was a season of my life. And, and I thought I was in the wilderness. And God said, son, who told you that you were in the wilderness? What do you do when you think you're in the wilderness, Sabrina? And then Holy Spirit walks in that place of the wilderness that you think is the wilderness. He said, you ain't in the wilderness. You're just going through something. Somebody type this and say this to your virtual neighbor. Get up. Eh! Oh, I felt hope come in the room. Get up. Woo! You are not in the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, <laughs> there is no hope. In the wilderness is when you have lost favor. I want you to say that to your virtual neighbor. Get up. Get up. Woo. Get out of that place of death. Get out of that state of a coma. Get out of you thinking you need a machine to keep you breathing. When the voice comes, when the voice of the Lord, when the voice of the Holy Spirit, I heard the Lord tell me to tell some of you this. You're going to need to identify some intercessors in your life. Some of you are living life too much by yourself. What is an intercessor? This is a person who is anointed by God to pray for you. These are typically people that you can trust. These are typically people that you can share the inward most parts of your life with and feel safe. Woo! You need people in your life that will help you, pray for you, and like the sons of Noah, they will cover you until you recover. So you need intercessors in your life. Yes, you're gifted, but you got to be covered through intercessory prayer. Yes, you're talented, but we don't know everything and every angle and where the enemy is crouched at the door to try to destroy us. Find you some intercessors. Find you a few people that you can pray with and, and will intercede with you. Here it is. To be a voice, you must fall in love with his voice. Somebody say, I'm falling in love again. Woo. You've been saved for a number of years. You can prophesy well. You got a great career. You got an awesome credit score. But the Lord told me to tell you tonight that I was preparing earlier. He said, tell them to fall in love with my voice. Woo. Tell them to covet my voice. Tell them to position themselves not to be so busy that they hear voices and not my voice. God has made each of you a voice. My, my. This is bigger than taking the muzzle off. I know that was trendy. I know, I know they're saying different things throughout social media for the last decade, but this amplification of your voice that God is putting on the inside of your vocal cords, whoo, you will not be in another season of, of talking with no voice. My, my, shy. When you are talking and the voice of the Lord is backing you up, manifestation happens. You know God is talking when you say a thing and then manifestation happens. When the voice of the Lord speaks to you and through you, manifestation follows. Somebody shout, manifestation. Manifestation. 
God, we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, that you are sending people in our life. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> that will kiss us, Basha, and who will be the voice, my Masha. People who are strong enough. I just come to encourage tonight. I'm falling in love with the voice again. My, my shot. Come on, manifestation. Come on, let's pray this through and we're done. Father, we thank you tonight for your anointing. We thank you that you are in this room, God. We thank you that you are in this atmosphere. Can we pray? I want you just to put flames of fire on the screen. We thank you, God, that tonight, God, that you are waking up everything in us tonight, God, that you are positioning people around us, God, to help us in this new place. We are not in the wilderness. And in fact, most of you are closer to the promised land than you know. Whoa, the promise is near. Oh God, I feel the prophetic in here now. The promise is near. And for some of you, what you just came out of was only to distract you. It was only to stress you out. It was only to cause depression to be in your heart. It was only to cause anxiety. But I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit right now that God is placing people around you whoa, that will remind you of how blessed you are, how favored you are. And I come against every generational curse. I come against every strong man. Everything that would stop you woo, from stepping into a place of purpose and promise. I decree and declare that you will not just understand that you are a voice, but that you will use your voice, come on here, to fulfill your purpose. May you never be quiet again. Woo. May you never box your voice into a, a particular category. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are stepping into a new place because of the power and the potency of your voice. Somebody say this. My voice is necessary. My voice is needed. And my voice is ready. Many of you have a voice. And God is maturing your voice to be prepared and seasoned for the time that is most needed. In some seasons, you were like, you felt like you were looked upon and looked over actually. You were only looked over because your voice wasn't ready then. But Karen, our voices are ready. We are mature enough now. We won't step into the ring and then want to quit and, and give up when persecution and accusation comes. Our voice is necessary and we are ready for this place. <clears throat> Say that on the screen. My voice is ready. Woo! My voice is ready. My shot. Come on here. My voice is necessary. My voice is needed. Come on here. And my voice is ready. I'm ready to come into the room and have the conversation now. And I thank you, God, that in the last season, some were kissed and it was a betrayal. But in this place, woo, the kiss will be to wake you up. We thank you tonight for all that you've said all that you've done, being ready to do, God. And I thank you for promotion. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you, woo, because of your voice, and for some of you, he's going to touch the, the, the voice of the advocate in you. He will use you to advocate for people who, who don't have as strong of a voice as you do. Some of you are getting ready to throw in the towel, and, and the real reason why your voice is so necessary is because there are people that cannot defend themselves. There are women, come on here, that are not strong enough to speak up for themselves, and he's put you there for that. Oh, God have mercy. While we're walking around asking God, what is my purpose and am I needed? And even if social media don't need you, there's always a seat in your community. Woo! There's a seat in the Board of Education. Come on here. There's a, there's a seat at these local meetings with the aldermen of your city. Social media will have you thinking that your voice is not necessary because you get a few likes. As we said earlier, big things happen in small rooms. Big things happen at little tables. Some of the biggest, and I want y'all to hear this prophetically, and I'm done. Some of the biggest rooms woo, that you're getting ready to walk into will have a small door. <laughs> I want y'all to understand. And maybe this is why the word of the Lord tells us, to, it, it, it declares, despise not the day of small beginnings. Eh, somebody say small doors. Prophet is Chioma. Woo, small doors. Woo. Somebody say small doors, small doors. It's a small door, but Prophet is D'Angelo. It's a mansion behind it. Woo. It's a small door, but that's my window. Come on here. Here it is. Come on. It's a small door. Hallelujah. 
but it is my window, hallelujah, to six figures. Oh, it's a small door, but this is my opportunity, Evangelist Kim, to start the outreach program, the mentorship program, the program for the homeless, oh, the program for domestic violence and, and women who've been abused. This is a small door, oh, but it has a big opportunity for it. It's a small door, come on here. But there are people that will come along with what some consider to be small, and they will partner and finance it. Big things happen in small rooms. Never measure the impact one is making because of what they post on social media. There are some things that people are working on that are so big that if they mention it on social media, it ruins the whole entire thing. Somebody say, I will not ruin that. I will not ruin that. Woo. God, we thank you. And I sense in this moment that God wants to position many of you, woo, God have mercy, to be the voice where you are. He allowed you to live through it to be the voice for it. One of the things I love about John the Baptist, if we were to break down chapter three, we'd understand that John the Baptist had one message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, repent. His message was repentance and the kingdom of heaven being at hand. Then God positioned John. Woo! to speak to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So God is preparing many of you for opportunities to talk to people, here it is, that think they know more than you until they're in a crisis. If I had time, I'd tell you, all the people who laughed at us for doing online ministry, and now if you're not doing online ministry, you're not even necessary. What was funny in one season isn't funny anymore. He'll make you, he'll take you from feeling like you are the joke to being the expert. Woo. Can you survive the laugh? Woo. Can you survive the ridicule? Can you survive being told like we did for many years, you ain't no real ministry. God ain't on your life. You are self-governed. You are rebellious. And now those men woo, seek me out for advice and I do not remind them of what they said. I leave my hand out to help them because I know there's a blessing woo, waiting on me when I don't rub stuff in people's face. I knew when I was doing it, I was necessary. Woo. I knew when I started it, God told me to do it. I knew when God said, sit in that chair and roll around like you a crazy man singing other people's song. I knew at that time we'd have thousands, but because I wasn't in it for the money or the number, I walked away from a career. One of my coworkers of 10 years is on the broadcast. I resigned, I didn't get put out. I didn't get fired. I wasn't in no crazy situation. I walked away from a career to do the work of ministry. And I only tell you that to tell you this. In one season, it can be funny. Woo! And in another season, you can be the lifeline. And one, that's why you got to understand the purpose and the assignment of your voice. Some of you, God is getting ready to allow your voice to be a beacon of hope. He's getting ready to allow your voice to be the only lifeline in the room. Don't let nobody mess with your voice. Woo. Somebody say, turn up the volume. Yeah. Turn up the volume. Come on here. Adjust my mic. I got something to say. And so God positions John the Baptist to talk to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And here it is, and I'm done for real. My fifth Baptist closing. Y'all pray for me. John speaks to Jesus in verses uh, in Matthew 3, verses 11 through 12. And we're, we're still talking about the voice. John speaks to Jesus. And then he baptizes Jesus. <laughs> All right, I'm done. There are, there are some seasons <laughs> you don't even feel you're worthy to do the thing you're doing. Come on here. And whether you notice or not, as I was studying this prophet Shioma, I came to the understanding that you know John the Baptist only met Jesus twice. I'll leave it alone. Woo. Come on, because he's doing something in, in the life of people, come on here, that have not been around you that many times. You think that's going to come through people that have been around for years. He's using, come on, all he need was two interactions Woo. to be in position and be the voice. Some of you, you've been looking for God to do something from, in your life through people that you know. What if he chooses to use a stranger that is full of love? Woo. A stranger that is full of the same mission that you have I don't have to know you for you to be the voice says God I don't have to know you for you to be the voice Woo! all right here it is 
I feel an anointing in this atmosphere. If you sense this anointing, I want you to put flames of fire all throughout the screen and we're done. Woo! How about shy? It's not going to come through familiar places this time, Pastor Trina. It's going to be people that just met you. Woo! It's going to be people that read about you. It's going to be people who heard your name in the wind. Somebody say, my name is in the wind because of his voice. Holy Spirit puts our name in the wind. Woo! Holy Spirit puts our business in the frequency. Come on here. Holy Spirit is the only determining factor. Yes, I need people, but I can do without them. Come on here. Yes, I need this, but I can do without it. I decree and declare yeah, that God is doing a new thing. And he's going to use your voice. Whoa, them flames are flying up. He's going to use your voice. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, and you have enough for him to use. Woo. You have enough right now for him to use. Prophet is the Angela. We have enough woo, for him to use. I want those of you woo, who know God is speaking. This is a number that I hear in my spirit. And I don't even know what this number is about. But I hear the number 31 on the screen. Woo. Come on, 31. Somebody put 31 on the screen. I hear it in my, I hear this in my spirit. And I don't always decree and declare this, but I decree and declare woo, within the next 31 days. How about Shondo Boha? I feel the prophetic creeping in now. There will be there will be conversations woo, that your name will be put in. There will be there will be circumstances, situations where your name will be put in a room that you ain't even got to. I decree and declare, woo, God have mercy. For some of you at the age of 31, that'll be the age where you get married. That'll be the age where you walk into possession of things you don't even think you deserve. Somebody keep putting 31. I decree and declare 31 blessings over your life. 31 prophetic words coming to pass. 31 seasons of your life that tried to crush you being sabotaged and ruined by the enemy. I decree and declare woo, that you're stepping into a new place of promise. I decree and declare that the next 31 days of your life will be so different you won't recognize yourself, Prophet of I decree and declare woo, that God will put 31 people around you. 31 opportunities will come. 31 days of healing, 31 days of restoration, 31 days of reconciliation, I decree and declare by the power of Yahshua that you are coming out of dead places, uh, you are coming out of dead things, and God is putting you in a place eh, where you'll always be able to know his voice, even if you don't recognize the season. Eh, who was that for? You'll know his voice, even if you don't recognize the season. Eh, oh, and I heard this for a few of you. How about Shah? And a Trina, when your name popped up, I heard this. Now this is for you and everybody in here. For some of you, it might be 31 of you, God is going to allow your credit score. Woo, I feel this in here. And the last time I said this, Pastor Erica, my wife, are my witnesses, and many of you are too. There are some of you, there are things you need, and you need your credit score to be 31 points higher. Who are you? Woo. If it's too private, you can just say it and flip and do cartwheels in your room, in your office, in the kitchen, wherever you might even be in the bathroom. We don't mind, it's social media. There are some of you, Woo. your credit score is gonna jump up 31 points. This is the prophetic talking now. This ain't Marcus. Yeah. Bye bye, shot. There's some of you, there's some stuff you're trying to walk into, hallelujah. And your credit score is 31 points short. I decree and declare. That within the next 31 days and here's the thing that's supernatural about this evangelist kim you will have not done anything different for your credit score to change he is the god Woo. somebody say that that's my last declaration he is the god that changes credit scores Woo. he is the god you wake up in the morning and you see deposits in your bank account. Yeah, hey, Pastor Trina, I feel glory. <laughs> How about Sha? He is the God. Woo! When you go to check your credit score, they say, no, you don't have a 731. You got an 831. Woo! He is the God. What is a credit score to God? Woo! What is a job to God? Come on here. What are these things to God? That stuff is small to God. Raise your expectation so manifestation will be greater. This is for 31 of you. Woo! Go sow the seed now. It's a crazy anointing in here. Yeah. I want 31 of you now. Go so you see. There is such an anoint there is a river of the anointing in here. I ain't begging you. Woo. I ain't priming you. If you don't feel the anointing and you don't feel no urge to give, sugar, you pray us through as we sow. But I want each one of you. Woo. Go sow your seed now. Seed of $31. Now some of you, you gonna sow for yourself and somebody else. The ways to give are, are on the screen. It is our custom now to do this. Woo! When, you, when, you, when you're when you going to sow and participate, just simply say, I'm in. 
And then when you're done, just simply come back and say, done. God have mercy. And we touch and agree with every sower. Woo! He is the God that changes credit score. Credit score change is easy for God. That ain't nothing. He don't even have to open up his eyes to do that. The ways are so MarcusRivers.org. Cash app is Marcus Rivers Global. PayPal is PayPal.me, Marcus Rivers. Go and put your seed in the ground. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to give, and I'll be right back with you, and we're going to close out this service. This is a moment to get your seed in the ground. Don't you miss the word because of the seed. Go and sow now. I'll be right back with you in a few moments. for their voice to be amplified. I decree and declare, God, for every person that is partnering in this moment, God, ooh, that they haven't seen their best days yet, God. I decree and I declare, God, that you are doing such a miraculous thing in their life now, God, as they partner with this word, God, as they sow into this moment, God. I pray for every person now, God, huh, that you increase their faith now, God, huh, that you allow them to prosper, God, here on earth, God, even as their soul prosper, God. I come against lack, ooh, I come against sickness, God. I curse sickness at the root, God. I come against all forms of witchcraft, God. I come against everything that tries to muzzle their voices now, God. I decree and declare, God, that you are taking them into a prosperous place, God. Uh, that you command their, everything about their life to prosper, God. I pray for their children, God. I pray for their mind, their relationships, God. I decree and declare, God, you're bringing us into our wealthy place now, God. We decree and declare, God, that our days of broke are coming to an end, God. Our days of not having enough are coming to an end. I need somebody to shout, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Oh, I'll never be broke another day in my life. You shall not struggle. Come on here. You will not lose out. Come on here. The sickness won't take you out. I command sickness to go out your body now. I curse cancer at the root. I decree and declare that you are walking into a new place. A place of miraculous things. Come on here. A place of divinity. A place of healing. A place where your humanity ends and you step into a place of promise and, hu and, and, and humanity ends now. We thank you. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. You are the answer. Woo! I'll never be, put that in the atmosphere, we're done. I'll never be broke. Woo! Another day in my life. Come on here. Come on, lack cannot live here. Sickness cannot live here. Fear has no place to live here. Come on here. We're stepping out of this. Come on here. We're coming out of this. Tomorrow is a better day. God, we thank you. God, we love you. And it shall be. Woo! And it shall be. Somebody put that. Woo! And it shall be. My mind, and it shall be. Hi, Yasa, and it shall be. Woo, and it shall be, Pastor Trina. Woo, Prophet Alicia, and it shall be. Chantel, and it shall be. Come on, Miss Tomorrow, and it shall be. God, we thank you that promises are coming to pass. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. And it shall be. Woo, in Jesus' name. Lift your hands right through here. Give him a worship. Give him a worship. God, we love you. Woo. We honor you. That's it. Somebody said, I sold for myself and my son. Some of you want to sow for your children. Woo. Some of you want to sow for those in your neighborhood. Come on. When you sow, it goes in places that you may not even ever get to go to. God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your power tonight. We thank you for being in this series entitled Redeem. I'm almost tempted. I'm almost tempted <laughs> to take this series two months long. There's so much on this topic of redemption. God have mercy. I'm almost tempted to take this series and call it Redemption. Redeemed continued. Woo! How about shy? God is bringing us back to life through this series. And he's showing us how much of a lifelong process redemption really is. God, we thank you. God, we honor you. I want those of you who are not connected to the, to the prayer line 
to go to marcusrivers.org and make sure you are connected to our prayer line. We pray every Monday and every Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Please join us right here for our Sunday morning worship experience at 10.30 a.m. God, we bless you. Woo! He is in here. Feel like the inner, cir uh, the inner circle. When we got done with the inner circle, the presence of God was so strong and I feel that same angelic presence in here now. Your healing is here. Woo! Your miracle is here. What he wants to do is in this atmosphere. God, we bless you. God, we love you, God. We thank you, God, that you are causing us to fall in love with your voice all over again like never before. I love you all. God bless you. I'll see you right here Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. as we continue our series entitled Redeem. As you leave this place but never his divine presence, I simply want you to put on the screen, I am redeemable. I love you. God bless you. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see you Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. right here. God bless you and shalom.